Hi, I'm Nick DiCiaccio with TE Systems and I'd like to talk to you today about creating multiple controllers in the XCAPI middleware. One great powerful feature of the XCAPI middleware is the ability to add multiple controllers for different tasks that you may want to achieve in your fax or voice over IP solution. There are several reasons why you may want to create multiple controllers within one XCAPI installation. The first of these is to create a failover or load balancing scenario where you can create multiple controllers and dedicate some of them to be the primary controller or controllers but if uh, those are not able to be reached or if they can't reach their remote destination to automatically fail over to other controllers that communicate with other network resources to be sure that your important fax and voice traffic makes it to its final destination. You can also use multiple controllers in a load balancing scenario to balance resources that are utilized throughout your network. Another reason to create multiple controllers within XCAPI is to dedicate, say, one for inbound voice or fax over IP traffic and the other for outbound voice over IP traffic. This way you can separate the traffic, even putting it on separate VLANs if you so desire. A third and Quite important reason for many people is least cost routing between SIP carriers. Let's say you have a SIP carrier which gives very good rates on national calls and another one uh, that gives great service on international calls. Well, you can differentiate between the two, pointing one SIP controller to one SIP carrier and the other SIP controller to another SIP carrier and that way you take advantage of the best rates to save your organization the most money. You can also communicate using one controller out to say a SIP carrier and another controller to an internal SIP PBX. You can use the PBX for internal only calls or local calls or whatever you choose. XCAPI has the power to offer you that kind of flexibility. And finally, though we don't see it very much these days, the protocol H323 is still very much used out there. In cases where you want to migrate, say from an older H323 network onto a newer uh, SIP network or out to a SIP carrier, you can create multiple controllers in XCAPI and configure one for H323 and the other for SIP. And that way you're able to take advantage of both signaling protocols simultaneously. Say, again, in a migration scenario where you have an older H323 network on one side and you want to connect it with a newer SIP network on the other side. Now, why don't we take a deep dive into XCAPI right now so I can show you how easy it is to use this powerful feature of creating multiple controllers. By the way, it's important to note that you do not need multiple network adapters in order to have multiple XCAPI controllers. You can have just one physical or virtual adapter on your machine on which you're installing XCAPI and create multiple XCAPI controllers to talk to the same adapter if so desired. So let's go ahead and have a look at how we do this in XCAPI. Now we'll add two controllers in our XCAPI configuration. When you open XCAPI and put yourself to the expert view. You will come to this information screen by default. Now we're going to add the XCAPI controllers. So we go over to the controller selection here. We're put to the controller tab and then we click new to add our first controller. This will start up a wizard where you can choose the appropriate SIP provider or PBX or other VoIP system. You have generic choices available, however, we do have an extensive uh, interop list in our wizard. When the wizard uh, pops up, as you will see, you can just select the provider or PBX system if it is on the list, and all of the configuration tweaks that are necessary to communicate uh, optimally with that provider or PBX system will be configured for you behind the scenes, so all you have to do is make the selection which is a great option offered by XCAPI. Makes things much easier for you. 
So here we're going to be adding uh, two controllers, each to talk to a separate SIP provider. So we will select SIP provider first and then click next. The list of SIP providers is right here as you can see including the generic option. Here we're going to choose Babytel as our first SIP provider. Click next. The description defaults to the name of the SIP provider. You can change it if you want. And here you can also change the number of channels to the appropriate number that you will use to communicate with that SIP provider. For this example, we will leave it at two channels. We'll click next. Here you would input the username and password if authentication is required by your SIP provider. If they do require authentication, they would need to tell you what username and password to use. Then you would input that here. Of course, you can always configure XCAPI and then go back and input this information at a later date. For now, we'll assume they do not require a username and password, and so we'll simply click Next to move on. Here, the network interface screen, this is the local network adapter to which you will attach your XCAPI controller. We will choose this IP address. That's on our XCAPI machine, we will click Next. Here, if there is a NAT-enabled router or gateway between uh, XCAPI and the provider that's doing NAT translation, uh, you would need to make the appropriate selection here and put in the IP address or stun server information as given to you by the administrator. However, in this example, we will simply go with the default of don't use NAT traversal techniques. And click Next. The port allocation is if you want to uh, contain the local uh, UDP ports to a certain range. Here we will simply click Next to move on. And now we will click Finish in order to uh, confirm the setup of our first XCAPI controller. Notice that all the choices here have a green check mark next to them. If any of them had a red X, you would need to go back and resolve whatever the issue was before you would be able to finish the configuration and add the controller. Here everything looks good, so we'll click Finish. You can see that the first SIP controller is added, uh, configured to communicate to the SIP provider Babytel. When we go over here to the tree view and click the X to expand, you can see all of the various configuration options for this SIP provider on this particular XCAPI controller. Now we're going to add another controller to talk to another SIP provider, so we will click New and we will once again click SIP provider and click Next. We will now choose a US based SIP provider level 3 and click next. We will simply once again leave the description at the default. You can see again that it is simply the name of the SIP provider and we'll also leave the number of channels at the default in this case for 2. Uh, again, this uh, username and password would need to be communicated to you by the SIP provider. For now, we'll assume they don't require one and uh, we will simply click Next to move on. Uh, here, the default SIP domain is uh, the IP address of the carrier's network. They would need to provide that to you. We'll just go ahead and input an IP address here. Click Next. Uh, here we will go ahead and choose the same network adapter to attach this XCAPI controller to. So we will choose that and click Next. On this NAT traversal screen, again, we will leave it at the default of don't use NAT traversal techniques. And for the port allocation, again, we will move on not selecting any range and we will now click Finish to confirm. Now. Notice this warning right up here. At least one controller is configured to use ports that are used by another controller. So notice that I put both of these North American based SIP providers on the same network adapter. Now that is okay to do, however, um, by default they're going to share the same SIP signaling port, which as we can see here, 
is 5060. So we check out level 3 and we check out baby tell and it's 5060 for both. So when you have uh, multiple controllers sharing the same network adapter, uh, something has to change. Either uh, another IP address needs to be configured on that adapter by the network administrator and then you can attach the XCAPI controller um, to that IP address on that adapter or you can keep the same IP address on the network adapter however change the SIP signaling port. Here we're going to go to the level 3 choice. We're going to go under SIP and under protocol and we're going to change the SIP signaling port from 5060 to 5062 and we will save the configuration. Notice that the error is now gone. So even though these now share the same IP address, they will communicate using different SIP signaling ports. And yes, it's that simple to create multiple controllers in XCAPI. Now you can go through the XCAPI configuration utility and tweak and adjust the configurations for each individual controller as desired. Always remember to save the XCAPI configuration after making any configuration changes and if you have a CAPI application running you will need to restart all of the services from that application that touch XCAPI before those changes will all take effect. So it really is that easy and yet that powerful offering you the flexibility to talk to multiple resources with one XCAPI installation. Once again my name is Nick DiCiaccio with TE Systems Thank you for watching and have a great day.